We're here at the Templo Mayor, the main temple of the Aztecs, which is in present-day Mexico City. This was the heart, the most sacred place in the Aztec Empire. But they didn't call themselves Aztecs. They called themselves the Mexica, or more accurately, the Tenochka Mexica. And they called the city Tenochtitlan. That basically means the place of the prickly pear cactus. The name Aztec is something that was given to them later in the 19th century, and the Mexica, or the Aztec, belonged to a much larger ethnic group called the Nahua, who spoke Nahuatl. And they founded their capital city here because of a vision that they saw at the end of a very long period of traveling. One of the most important myths for the Aztecs was this migration myth, where they left their mythic homeland of Aslan from a place called Chicomostac, or the place of the seven caves. And the ancestors begin this migration because their patron deity, Huitzilopochtli, told them to go on this migration and to behold the sign and to establish a city there. And the sign that they saw at the end of their journey was an eagle perched on a cactus that was growing out of a rock in the middle of a lake. And that lake is here in central Mexico. And in fact, modern day Mexico City is on top of that lake. The city of Tenochtitlan is founded in 1325. And the city is a planned city. The Spanish who conquered it two centuries later were awed by the incredible planning. They saw canals, they saw four major causeways going through the city, meeting at the center point of this temple where we are now. The city was all laid out on a very careful grid plan. This was a very ordered, very clean, urban center. And it had four quadrants, and this was a part of Aztec ideology. They believed that the universe was divided into four. And so what the city reflects is this cosmological diagram with Tenochtitlan as the center of the universe and their main temple, the Temple Mayor, in the sacred precinct as the center of that center. We're talking about the center of a vast empire with subordinate cities that paid tribute to the Aztecs. Some of the goods that made up this tribute included lots of luxury and precious goods like feathers or green stone or textiles. It was critical for the Aztecs to bring prisoners from those subordinated cities here to Tenochtitlan to be part of a sacrificial ritual. Maybe some of you are familiar with what's called the Flowery Wars, which was a form of a ritualized war warfare or battles where the main point was to acquire captives for the purpose of sacrifice and initially they didn't have this vast power over the valley of Mexico. They were subordinate to some other places around the lake who they eventually defeated and they formed what's called the Triple Alliance. Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, and Tlacopan. Eventually the peoples of Tenochtitlan became more powerful. We're talking about a city that at its height had between 200 and 300,000 people estimated. So with such a large population, it was critical to find ways to feed the people that lived here. And so there were important agricultural techniques used like chinampas, these muddy raised beds to help provide food for the people of Tenochtitlan. And the landscape played a critically important role also in ritual. We know that there were many processions made to various mountains around the lake It's hard to imagine as we look over Mexico City today that this was once a lake. And it's after the Spanish conquest in 1521 that you begin to have the draining of the lake. But of course, it's still a lake bed, so you can actually see the parts of Mexico City (laughs) that are sinking. One of the largest cities of the Mesoamerican world in the 15th century is one of the largest cities today in the 21st century, Mexico City.